we are here with Simon Anselman. Hello. In uh, Romix, how do you came up uh, with uh, the the characters of Megan Mog? It's been like ten years since I've been doing Megan Mog. 2008. I moved from Australia to London, and it was like an accident. I'd, I'd been drawing witches a lot. I thought witches were cool. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna draw some witches and cats. And I was working on a big graphic novel called Girl Mountain, which was like Twin Peaks or something. Like, yeah. a, you know, a bunch of kids in a small town and like weird shit happening. And I was getting kind of sick of it. I was like 250 pages into it. And then I just wanted to do like a stupid kind of stoner roommate sitcom, kind of TV comedy. There's a kid's book called Megan Mog from the UK. So I just nicknamed the witch and the cat Megan Mog. And then it just kind of happened. I didn't think about it. I didn't think it'd be like my main thing that 10 years later I'd still be doing Megan Mog and I'd be sitting in Italy talking about Megan yeah, Mog. Yeah. So yeah, complete accident. Were you inspired by those um, comic books? Not really. I mean, I just, those, it's about a witch and a cat. And I read them when I was a little kid. I learned to read from reading Megan Mog. But yeah, the, the kids' books are very different. My Megan Mog's about my friends, my, you know, the music scene I used to hang out in uh, Tasmania. So, how yeah. much? Uh, how much uh, autobiographic is uh, Megan Mug? Pretty heavily, like yeah. you know, 90%. So yeah. Yeah, it's just based on me and my fucked up friends. And, and the, the new book I'm working on is sort of about my my mother. My mother's like a junkie, and mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's all about that. It's all about Meg trying to come to terms with her own drug use and like seeing how it's damaged her mother, and that she has to like stop. So your your drug use is similar to the characters. It used to be, uh, yeah. Maybe you were younger. Yeah, I'm 36 now, so you know I'm trying to you know get out of that. And, you know, I want to have a kid and stuff. I'm married, you know, I'm trying to be like a, a good boy. Do you ever want uh, to be a comic artist in your life? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I started making like fanzines, like self-published when I was eight years old. I don't know where I got the idea, I just, I was drawing comics when I was very, like a little boy. And then I, I went to the corner store that had a photocopy Xerox machine yeah. and just started printing them up and sold them on the playground at school, like walking around, oh, would you like to buy my book, it's a dollar. And never stopped. Like the, re the real do it yourself. Yeah, like Peter Pan, I, I never grew up, I just kept on making comics and it's all I ever wanted to do. I used to have a poster of Fanagraphics, the American publisher, on my wall when I was like 13. And I would stare at it and just like, oh, Fanagraphics, oh. Like the impossible dream. Yeah, to and I've done it now. Now it's like, what the fuck do I do? My dream came true. Like, where do I go yeah, next? It's great. It's yeah. Really nice. And I, I realized, like, there's no money in it. <laughs> I used to imagine, like, you know, all these cartoonists were making a lot of money, but no. <laughs> I know also that you play Giro. Right? Yeah, mostly keyboards, but yeah, for a while I had like a solo guitar band. Yeah, do you have a band right now in Seattle? I was in a band for 10 years with this guy, Carl von Bamberger. We used mm -hmm. to make comics together and we had a band. Uh, he died of a heroin overdose two years ago. We, we played a farewell show in Melbourne before I moved to America. And I was like, come to America, we'll play shows. And he was like, yeah. But then two weeks later he fucking died. <laughs> so since then I... I I can't find anyone to replace him. He was like one of my best friends, and I, for a while I'd, uh, I'd I'd play with him still. I had him on an iPod with his vocals, and we'd sing together. And it was kind of like I was singing with his ghost. Yeah, yeah. And it was very depressing. And I'd cry on stage. And then I was at San Diego Comic Con, and this woman came up to me and said, "I'm a psychic. Your friend Carl, he does not like being trapped in the iPod." And it kind of freaked me out. You yeah. Know? Man. So I kind of stopped doing it. But yeah, no new bands, and I'm too busy with comics. I just got a new computer with GarageBand on it, and I bought a MIDI keyboard. So I kind of want to start doing music again, and like put out a CDR, even though that's not, no one puts out CDRs anymore. Yeah, I'm very bad at music, like I, I was never talented at it. Like, the comics, people like them and people buy them, but my music, no one wants to listen to it. Like, <laughs> you know, two people would show up to a gig. Had to kind of give it up. What do you think about the uh, drugs uh, laws? Uh, some places that are really heavy right now. What do you think of it? Marijuana should be legal. Yeah. Really. I mean, you know, med medically. I mean, it helps cancer patients. My my best friend, uh, HTML Flowers, a comics artist and a rapper. He, he lives in Melbourne. He he has uh, cystic fibrosis, like a lung disease. Like he should be allowed to smoke or eat like medical marijuana. Yeah, yeah, he's he, medical. He's very depressed but they won't let him. 
violence. You know, it's legal in America. It's legal in Seattle where I live, which is crazy because America had the war on drugs for yeah. years, and it's like fucking Amsterdam in Seattle now. Like, yeah. There's weed stores on every fucking corner. Being a pothead's not great. I mean, it's not the best thing. It's, it costs a lot of money, and you become yeah. dependent on yeah. it. And it's you know, so it probably shouldn't be legal. Really, ideally, we should just be drinking water and just you know getting high on life. Ideally. But, you know, but yeah, it should be fucking legal, like... And in America, like, they make tax money, like, they pay for the roads. Like, instead of it going to cartels and, like, illegal shit... Yeah. It's, you know, the government can make tax money and, and pay for schools and roads. For the Italian poster, uh, have you inspired by Michele Brambilla? Oh, yeah, yeah, what's well, uh, who's the, the guy, uh, that she was Silvio running Berlusconi. Yeah, yeah Berlusconi. Yeah, yeah, the... Yeah, my, my agent is Italian, uh, ah. Alessandra uh, Malvestio, or Sternfeld now, she got married. Yeah, she lives in Brooklyn now. Yeah, I know her. Yeah, yeah, yeah she's a good agent. Um, and for years she was like, you've got to do this. Like, the cover of the Italian book, it must be Berlusconi. And I, I didn't do that. So I thought for the tour poster, I'll make Ale happy and do the Berlusconi. Do you know a little bit about uh, Italian politics? Not really. I, I saw an episode of uh, John Oliver, um, an American sort of political comedian. He did a big special on Berlusconi like a month ago. So that's where I got the idea for the volcano. Yeah, yeah. You were born in Tasmania. You you lived in Australia, in London. Uh, you live in Seattle now, right? Yeah. And you, you fly around the world. Uh, do you like to, to fly around the world or do you do that just uh, for your career? Yeah, I'm kind of sick of it now. Um, yeah? In, in 2015, I did 10 countries that year. It's like Russia, like Colombia, you know, all over Norway and Finland. and. And it was kind of too much. Yeah. yeah, I was in Paris twice last year, so like, I enjoy it, but but now I've traveled so much, it's like, everywhere's kind of the same, yeah. in a way. Like, this festival here, this could be in Moscow, or America, or Iceland, it's the same yeah, everywhere. the classical The, the, the uh, Harley Quinn cosplayers are everywhere. Like, yeah. like, uh, like, I'm working on my book right now, trying to finish this new book, and to, to leave for a week, and like, travel 20 hours, like, on a plane, like, ugh. <laughs> I, I am turning down a lot of travel. This year I was supposed to go to Japan, Brazil, Argentina, but I've said no. Like, you should not Japan. No. I'm just going to work on my book. <laughs> yeah. the, the Japan thing is supposed to be in November, and that's like a month before my book is due. So like, I'm going to be a fucking mess, like just trying to get the book done. So like two weeks in Japan, I'd, I'd be too stressed. Yeah. So I don't know. And I, I, I like staying at home. I've got seven rabbits and a dog and my yeah. wife, and I just like to stay home and, and work. About Japan, I see on your Instagram that you have some uh, doujinshi style. Yeah, some... It's a new book uh, that you are drawing. I didn't draw it, no. I was uh, stoned at like four in the morning, and I was Googling myself, and I was like, what the fuck is I this? Find like, the... Some young girl in Japan drew a, a sexy version of Megan Mog. And she had no intention of telling me about it. <laughs> and, but I, I tracked it down and wrote to her and said, what's this? And like, I don't care. Like, I think it's cool. Just send me some copies. And then I, I bootlegged it. I, I, I scanned it all and I made my own version. And you made it. And she got mad at me. She found out and she was like, you, you can't do this. And I was like, well, but you ripped me off. So now I'm like ripping you off. Like, With your that's, characters. Yeah, that's fair. You sold a bunch of these in Japan. I'm going to make my own and sell a few of them myself. Where's my seems, money? Seems legit. But it's, it's like my favorite thing ever. It's, it's better than my Megan Mog. <laughs> no. uh, I, I love it. That, that's when I felt like I truly made it as an artist, that Japanese girls were making fake porno versions of Megan Mog. Do you like manga? Uh, nah, not really. I, no, I've never really read much manga. I try, like, I, I've had friends take me to, I say take me to the manga store, show me some good manga. Yeah, I've never really taken to it. I, I like Klaus, I like Burns, I like, yeah, you know, know like, the, the, the yeah, I grew up on like Asterix and Tintin and that sort of shit, and I like a lot of contemporary American shit. I like Fort Thunder a lot, like those kinds of guys. I think they hate me, I think they think I ripped them off, uh, and now I'm like more popular than all those guys, so... <laughs> Do you know some Italian artist that uh, you like? I, I like uh, the Zanardi guy, so Pacienza. Andrea Pazienza. Yeah, I love uh, that shit. Uh, Zanardi's that's awesome. That's great. I like Lorenzo Matodi. Uh, but yeah, I don't know too many Italian artists. Pacienza is getting published in, in, uh, in the US right now. Who is? 
Oh yeah, uh, yeah Fanagraphics yeah, put yeah, it yeah, out. Yeah, Ale, my agent hooked it up, and, and yeah, no, yeah, Fanagraphics put it out. It was a, a great, a great one. Yeah, oh, it's great. It's yeah, filthy and dirty and yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But yeah, there's there's some young Italian girl I like, uh, Roberta Scapaggia or something. Uh, She's very young. Canna Cola put out one of her books. And it's nice watercolor, kind of perverse and sexy and weird. But yeah, she's good. She's new. She's young. She's like 23, but she's really good. How oh, um, your passion with uh, cross-dressing uh, came out? Uh, since I was like five years old, I just yeah? always felt attracted to girls' clothes. And they're very confused for many years. Like, why am I, am I gay? Why do I want to dress like a girl? And in Tasmania is very homophobic. Like, it's very football. So, you know, I didn't tell anyone until I was like 30. Like, I'd, I'd tell girlfriends and stuff, like, oh, I mean, like, you know, cross-dresser. Some of them are like, ugh. And then some are like, oh, that's cool. Like, uh, that's cool. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> so, it's kind of punk. Uh, I, I was a little bit disappointed when I, when I saw you. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Everyone says that. <laughs> I mean, I, I maybe to, next time. Yeah, it's because I'm like traveling alone, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, I have to come back into America through customs, and I don't want my bag to be full of fake tits and and wigs, and because they they pull it out in front of everyone. Why do you have like, what is this? <laughs> And on the metal detector, it's like, it's like <coughs> silicone fake tits. They're like, what is this? They always open the bag and pull the tits out. <laughs> I mean, I could still be a woman. Uh, Sinead O'Connor. The, the yeah, yeah. I look like Sinead O'Connor. Yeah, yeah. So who's to say what a woman looks like? <laughs> but yeah, not this time. But people always say that, oh, I'm disappointed. And I think I'm kind of like, you know, like it's a because fuck it, you. Like, it's really cool. Yeah, I guess. I look sexy. I got good legs. <laughs> but yeah, when people start to expect it and want it, I guess I'm rebelling yeah. by like, well, if you want it so bad, you don't get it yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, and I think like it used to drive me crazy like uh, it, was, it made me really depressed and because I couldn't do it and it was a secret but once I told everyone and no one cared I, I feel like I have to do it less now I, I don't feel that crazy urge to do it I'm, I'm more comfortable being male so your next book will be about uh, Maggie Morgan uh, or will be something new maybe uh, a graphic novel uh, or it's Megan Mog still, but but it's like a new series of Megan Mog. It's uh, at the end of my first book, Al moves out. He says like, "Fuck you guys! Like yeah. you, you sexually assaulted me. Yeah. You, you treat me like shit." <laughs> and he moves out. And then I put out two books after that that's set before he moves out. So for years I've been like, I have to do this new book. Like I have to. He's moved out. Everything moves forward. So that's the book I'm working on. It's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm, I'm 90 pages into drawing, into penciling the new book, um, and yeah, Al has left, Werewolf Jones has moved in, and it's it's going to be more about my mother, my mother's like a drug yeah, addict, yeah. and so it's, it's Meg dealing with that, like she has to go and look after her mother and start to think about her drug use and what she's doing, and yeah, Requiem for a Dream, do you know that yeah, film? The movie. It's going to be more like that. I feel like Megan Mob right now is like Cheech and Chong. Mm -hmm. And like it's gonna get a bit more requiem for a dreamy, a bit more heavy. And I just I love drawing Megan Mog. I, I I could draw something else, but I have a lot of material for Megan Mog. I think I could go another ten years before I get sick of Megan Mog. I did a science fiction story last year. There's this French anthology called Le Gon, which is like really beautifully printed, like avant-garde, like fancy anthology. And they asked me to be in the third issue, and I was like, oh wow. And they it's said a single story. Uh, yeah, just like a 12-page story. But they said, uh, like, oh, no Megan Mog, like, go oh, do something different. And I was like, okay, I'll do this science fiction story with these, like, human teenage characters. And it sucked. Like, when I handed it in, I could tell that they fucking hated it. I hated it. It wasn't successful. So that kind of turned me off from... Uh, <laughs> from doing well, anything else. that you want to do, maybe. No, no. I'm, I'm comfortable with Megan Mog. I, I know the characters. I can, I can write it so easily. And if I wanted to do anything else, I'd probably do an adaptation of this uh, a book by Knut Hampson, a Norwegian writer from the 18, like 1890, I think this yeah. book came out. And it's like romantic Norwegian, like uh, psychological literature. So if I put that out now, and people are like, oh, a new Simon Hanselman book, like, They'd be like, oh, what is this? It's like yeah, a, they a would be disoriented. Yeah, it's like a romance story. Like, <laughs> ugh. what was your principal uh, influence uh, in the in the comic scene? I mean, I've gone through a lot of influences. I mean, early on when I was a kid, it was like uh, Mad Magazine and Simpsons and stuff like yeah. that. 
I really like the filmmaker Todd Salons. He did that film Happiness, uh, Welcome mm -hmm. to the Dollhouse. I, I love his stuff. I really like Fort Thunder, like uh, CF, Ben Jones, Matt Brinkman, all that shit. About the uh, European uh, comic artist? A lot of British artists I like, like uh, Leon Sadler and John Chandler. <laughs> I liked uh, Berliak, uh, an Argentinian guy, but he got in big trouble in the US. I know, I interviewed uh, Berliak. Yeah, he lost his book deal and... The Europeans seemed confused. They were like, why is Michael the Forge making a big deal out of this? Like, I, I get it and stuff why people were mad, but mm. I, I know Berliak. I've hung out with him. He's not a transphobe. He's not a racist. Absolutely. You get in trouble. Like, I, I feel like, like saying this, I feel paranoid. If any Americans watch this, it's like, I'm going to get in trouble for like saying like, oh, Berliak's okay. You start on Tumblr, your uh, series. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I hate web comics. I, I mean, I made zines for years, I'd play noise shows where I'm like shirtlessly screaming, banging on a keyboard, and then afterwards like, oh, I have some comic books for sale. Mm. And of course at a noise show, no one wants to buy comic books. And then a friend convinced me, like, put shit on Tumblr, like, there's this website, like, yeah, it works okay for comics, and I was like, okay. And I, I put, like, I had like 200 pages of Megan Mog, and I, I just put it all on Tumblr. And then I think a month later, I had Fanagraphics, Picturebox, Koyama, all these American publishers I love writing to me. And like Misma from France, Valencio Pimentel from Spain. It just happened really quickly. I just put all this shit up and people liked it. Mm. So, do you think that social network and internet in general are really important now for a young uh, comic artist? Well, yeah, I mean, Tumblr's shit now. Tumblr kind of died, and I guess Instagram's more popular yeah, now, but that, that, that doesn't work as well for comics. And on Tumblr, you can, like, you know, you get reblogged, and it kind of, like, viral. On Instagram, there's sort of none of that. And Twitter's bad for comics. Twitter's bad, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, you have to, obviously. I mean, it connects you with the world. I mean, you can try and sell your zines at noise shows or send them to shops, but, yeah, you've, you've got to have web presence in these this day and age, you, if you want people to know you. Everyone's on fucking tablets all the time. What do you think about uh, these convention like Romics that we are now, or Angle <laughs> M, or the, the convention in the US? It's different from the US uh, in uh, Europe? No, this is, like I was saying earlier, this is exactly the same. As, yeah. uh, this could be anywhere in anywhere. the world, this festival. It's, it's just pop culture. This is all movies and Pokemon and Magic the Gathering. And Angle M's better than this. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. There's, Angle It's M's, more cultural. Yes, it's more arty and, yeah, you know, yeah. and uh, literary. Yeah. This, you know, this is all toys. And yeah. At Angle M, you don't have toys and Magic the Gathering. <laughs> yeah, and like no one came to my signing here. Like I signed like five books. Like no one gave a shit. It's, this is not my audience. A few fans turned up. Like, as soon as I turned up, there were people, like, waiting with books, and but then they left, and, like, you know, I was just sitting there, like, staring out at the crowd, yeah. just feeling like a loser. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think the, the Italian bookstore events will go better. I'm hoping, I hope, yeah. I hope people will show up. It, I, it took a long time to fly here. Even Angoulême, like, the best part of Angoulême is the this thing called FOF, the Fuck Off Festival. And it's like a satellite event where all the weird shit is, all the risograph, like books made of wood and triangular yeah, yeah. books and like, you know, weird risograph shit. Like, that's the shit I love. Yeah, like uh, in Luca we had uh, something similar. Yeah. The, the Borda Fest. Yeah. With something uh, about uh, underground, more uh, yeah. out of production. Uh, yeah, actual artists yeah, making yeah, actual yeah, yeah, art, yeah, 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 yeah. not just, you know, toys. <laughs> Maybe this year it's a little better here with uh, the drawing, the life painting. Yeah, uh, that. <laughs> I have to do that painting soon. I'm nervous about it because I, I don't draw big. So it's going to be weird, like people watching and like a bunch of people in cosplay, like who's this wanker drawing a <laughs> witch on the wall? No, I don't really care. If, yeah. I, if I fuck it up, it's like whatever. <laughs> like, so guys, it was uh, Simon Alson. Yes. By his book, it was really, really great. Yes. Mega X. Uh, and Special K. Special from K. From Coconino Out Fandango. From Coconino, yeah. Mm, best publisher maybe, in, in, in Italy. Coconino, yeah. number one. You will have some uh, some more books uh, with Coconino. Yeah, yeah, they'll do the next one. I, I hope so. I got dropped by Coconino originally. They did Mega yeah. Hex when Igor was running it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now they, with they, Radiger. Yeah, it's, yeah uh, they didn't promote it. And so they just dropped me, but now Radiga took over and uh, they're doing like actual promotions. It's really different, <laughs> uh, it's really different direction that, that they are going right now yeah. with Radiga. Yeah. Seems and like if you don't know the artistic side of Radiga, 
try to read something because oh, he's good. He's I, one I, of the greatest. I can't read it because it's in Italian. Yeah, but it yeah, looks good. Yeah, and he's nice. Uh, yeah, I like Coconino. I was very disappointed to find out that Coconino was not founded on uh, mob cartel money. In America, that's the rumor that Coconino was started with all this like mob <laughs> money. Yeah, that's not true. Which is really <laughs> no, absolutely. It's, it's very upsetting. I, I wanted to be with the the Scarface publisher. Why yeah. is that voice in America? I don't know, that's just a rumor. Everyone's like, oh, I got started it with mob money. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it is true. I don't know. I don't think it's true, but... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> so, guys, this was the, our interview with Simon. See you next time.